about 2.45 this morning, this Venus service station at 2301 Cedar Springs was a scene of a burglary. But the events that followed caused this to be no ordinary burglary. It resulted in the death of one young boy and a murder charge filed against a Dallas policeman. What is going on YouTube? I am Lamont at Large. Today we're in Dallas, Texas. We're here to talk about the worst police shooting you've never heard of. And that is involving a Dallas police officer, a 12 year old little boy, and a deadly game of Russian roulette. We're gonna go back in time to April 20th, 1970 in this very neighborhood where I'm walking at right now. There's two Dallas police officers that are patrolling the area. We have Officer Daryl Lee Kane and his partner, Officer Jeffrey Kirksey. At the time, Officer Kane had been on the Dallas police force for about a little over two years and Officer Kirksey, don't quote me, I think for about seven or eight. They get a call on the radio that a alarm has been triggered at a place called Empire Bar and Grill, which used to be on this corner right over here. So they respond to the call, and just as Officers Kane and Kirksey pull up, they notice two males coming out of the building where the burglar alarm has just gone off. One of those men is 18-year-old Michael Moorhead. So one of the officers tells the guys, you know, stop and freeze. They both take off in different directions. One of them cuts across the street. It could have been here. It could have been there. I'm not really sure. All I know is it was a grassy area and a volley of 13 shots go off. One of those shots, several of those shots, found its aim in hitting 18-year-old Michael Moorhead. By the time the officers call in that there's been a shooting and paramedics arrive, Michael Moorhead is taken to the hospital where he is pronounced dead. Now, there was some kind of an investigation because uh, the shooting did raise awareness in the community that there possibly could have been a uh, police shooting that was unlawful. The FBI got involved, not heavily, and eventually no charges were filed. An 18-year-old kid shot dead by a Dallas cop doing something illegal, trying to break into this building right here. And everybody pretty much forgets about it. And Officer Daryl Kane, he goes on to patrol another day. Currently, we are at William B. Travis Vanguard and Academy. Now, back about 50 years ago, this was just plain old William B. Travis Elementary. Now, back in the early 70s, a couple of kids went to this school and they were brothers. At the time, David Rodriguez and his 12-year-old brother Santos. Now, these kids went to this school, but they didn't regularly go to the school because oftentimes when they would come to this school, uh, they wouldn't attend class. Uh, they would uh, ditch or become truant, whatever you want to call it. And then they would go gallivanting around town, uh, getting into a little bit of mischief, a little bit of shoplifting, anybody? I mean, who hasn't shoplifted? I shoplifted plenty of times when I was a kid. Not proud of it, just saying I did it. I know some of you watching right now would uh, take something that didn't necessarily belong to you, especially if you were poor. And these kids would go around shoplifting and then they would get in trouble by the police. Uh, they would uh, break into vending machines, uh, just things like that. They didn't really have parental figures at home. The Rodriguez brothers don't know where dad is. Mother is doing a few years in prison 
for killing her boyfriend. So these kids are staying with either a family member, maybe a grandmother, or a uh, friend of a family. Both their moms and dads are not in their lives. These boys went to this very school where I'm at right now, getting into a little bit of trouble. Uh, I would just call it wayward kids, not having any uh, guidance in the home. And oftentimes when you're a teenager, you're a preteen, you don't have good uh, parental family structure. You don't have that good environment. You're going to get into trouble. That's just all there is to it. And because of their antics of them ditching school and, you know, breaking into things and just, you know, shoplifting and what have you, uh, they became pretty well known to the police officers that would patrol uh, this area to the point where, you know, when a cop drives down the street and they see one of the Rodriguez brothers, they say, ah, that's David or, oh, that's Santos. 50 years ago, little kids coming to school, ditching, getting into trouble. Less than a mile away from the elementary school, uh, this section of Dallas is commonly referred to as Uptown. As you can see, uh, many of these high-rise apartments and condominiums uh, dot the skyline here in Dallas. Uh, very uh, expensive neighborhood uh, to live in, to say the least. So you got a lot of two-bedroom apartments that are renting for upwards of $2,500 and maybe even more. And this construction site right here is yet probably going to be another high-rise apartment tower where many people cannot afford to live in. Or your whole paycheck goes to living there, whichever one you want to call it. But at this corner where we're going to be walking to right now was once a gas station. And this gas station was called the FINA gas station. And many of these people in the neighborhood would stop there, fill up their cars, fill up their vehicles, grab a pack of smokes, maybe a couple of Cokes for the kids in the back of the seat that are complaining because it's hot outside, so forth and so on. We're going to go to July 24th, 1973. It's about 3 o'clock in the morning. Dallas police officers are patrolling the area, making sure everything is on the up and up. Two of the officers in the area patrolling is one Roy Arnold and, of course, Daryl Lee Kane. By this time now, he has matured in his job as a Dallas police officer. He's shot somebody else. And now he has about uh, five years experience of working the streets of Dallas, stopping crime and shooting people. Three o'clock in the morning, July 24th, 1973, an alarm goes off at the FINA gas station, which used to be where this construction site is. Sir, officers Arnold and Kane respond to this gas station. Now, they're looking around and they see a busted out window. They peek inside and they see that, you know, it looks like it's been rummaged through. And just as they peek their heads out of the window, they see a couple of shadowy figures like running across the parking lot back over that way into the neighborhood. One of the officers... Roy Arnold, he says, I know who those boys are. Those are the Rodriguez boys. Cool. Maybe Officer Kane knows who they are. Like I said earlier, these kids would oftentimes get into quite a bit of trouble and they did, you know, earn a reputation as being a problem or a nuisance with the Dallas Police Department. And of course, they already know where the Rodriguez boys live. So they go to their home, knock on the door, and either a family member or whoever answers the door. Their English isn't the best. They live in a predominantly Mexican neighborhood and not many people at that time, you know, moving from the Mexico to the United States spoke English. So the officers ask for David and Santos. They come to the door 
and they immediately put them in handcuffs. And I'm sure the boys are asking, like, what's going on? Like, what, what are you guys doing? It's, you know, by now it's like 3.30 in the morning and they're, they're bleary-eyed or what have you. And the officer says, you know why we're here? We know what you did. So they handcuff both boys and bring them down to this gas station where it once used to be a gas station. Now, as the boys are handcuffed, Santos is sitting in the front passenger seat and his brother is in the back. Now, depending on what you guys want to believe on if the boys actually committed this crime or not, they're in the back of this cop car and Officer Kane is looking at the boys, David and Santos, and he says, tell me, tell me the truth. Were you guys the ones responsible for breaking into this gas station? And they said, no, we didn't do anything. Now the other officer, he claims that he's seen the boys running off and he immediately knew exactly who they were. But when they get to their house, the boys are in bed sleeping. Except that one of the officers notices that the boys are kind of sweaty. And it is July in Texas. And even though it's 3 o'clock in the morning, it's still going to be about 75 degrees. Normally, you don't sweat when you're laying in bed. So they're sitting at this gas station right across the street from where I'm at. And the officers are getting really frustrated with the boys because they're not admitting that they broke into the gas station. So in frustration, Officer Kane gets his 357 Magnum revolver and supposedly takes out all the bullets. He spins the cylinder, puts it back into the gun, cocks the hammer, and he points the gun right at Santos. He says, tell me the truth. I know you're responsible for breaking into this gas station. He said, I didn't do anything. I didn't, we, we weren't here, we were sleeping. When you pull the trigger, you hear a click. Now, if someone is pointing a gun at me and I hear a click, I'm gonna be scared because I think that these, who is ever doing this is insane. He spins the cylinder again cocks the hammer tell me the truth you were both responsible for breaking into this gas station Santos last words were I'm telling you the truth officer Kane pulled the trigger an ear shattering explosion rings out at the patrol car the bullet enters right underneath Santos' left ear and right into his brain. Immediately he slumps over and blood just starts pouring out of his nose and his ears. His brother David is in the back and he's going absolutely bonkers. He starts screaming his name. Officer Kane gets out of the vehicle and starts screaming, oh my God, oh my God, what have I done? I didn't mean to do it. And the other cop, Officer Arnold, he jumps out of his vehicle and immediately starts puking all over the place. Right here, right where I'm standing, you're listening to your brother crying your name and an officer out there screaming bloody murder and there's blood pouring out of your face and you're dying and a cop car police came to my they knocked on the door and they came came inside and picked me up me and my brother they woke us up and then they took us into the squad car one squad car they came in two and then they, they they said that, they said that, um, that, that we ran away from the police and something like that. Did you? 
We didn't. We never were down there at the first station. He said it looked like me. He took it out. He was, he was, uh, what do you call it? He rolling took out the, the rolling the chambers. Mm -hmm. He saw, he saw inside it. He stopped it and looked inside of it. it. It had around three or three or two bullets in it. He closed it back down and he pointed at my brother's head. He, he told him it, to tell him the truth. And he said that, that he said the truth is that he clicked, he, kicked, he clicked it once, he didn't fire. The second time I told him that this time it has a bullet in it. He clicked it and it fired and it, it blew his side of the face. He, 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 the bullet went right through him through the side of his ear from the bottom. What did you do then? I was trying to knock the, the gun out of his hand, but said that, that I was cuffed up in the back. Santos Rodriguez was rushed to Parkland Hospital, where he was later pronounced dead. And the following day, this story is all over the newspapers and TV all over Texas. Officer Kane was immediately suspended pending termination. He was asked for his gun and his badge. And a few days later, a warrant for malice murder was put out on him. He would later go to turn himself in and amazingly enough, angering a lot of people, he was let out on bail, only $5,000. The other officer that was there that night, Roy Arnold was promptly fired, not because of the shooting per se, but because he filed a false police report. Uh, he neglected to say in the police report that he had fired his gun because when both officers were asked to turn in their guns they did a check of his gun and they seen that it had been fired his commanding officer asked him well why was your gun fired and he said well i fired a warning shot uh when i seen the two individuals running away from the gas station so he was fired daryl kane is let out on five thousand dollars bail to the chagrin of many in the Dallas community, especially the Latino community. And they, let me tell you, they went out and protested. Some might even call it a riot. Uh, they went marching down to the old city hall over off of Main Street and were demanding justice for Santos Rodriguez to be let out of jail for $5,000 and a little boy lost his life, was murdered is truly uncalled for. Now, the bail system wasn't necessarily made to punish people. It's simply made to ensure that you show up for court and you get your day in said court. So because of the public outlash and outcry, uh, later on, uh, Daryl Kane was rebooked into jail on a $50,000 bond later on his attorney would ask that the chain for a change of venue being that uh, because this story got so much media attention they didn't feel that he was going to be able to get a fair trial here in Dallas so later on it was moved down to Austin and eventually he was granted a lower bond of twenty thousand dollars and as soon as he got that bond after sitting in jail for maybe a few months, uh, he was free once again. So they go to court. A trial starts. He's charged with malice murder. Now, the jury is told pretty much this. You can either find him guilty for malice murder or you can find him guilty for I guess you would call it non-malice murder, murder with no malice involved. Or you can find him not guilty. But, um, you know, not guilty is off the table because, you know, he readily admitted that it was an accident, that he didn't mean to shoot Santos. So they go to trial. Everybody comes up to testify. I'm not sure how long the trial lasted. But eventually, 
Daryl Kane was found guilty of murder. Now, the question of whether it would be murder or, ma or malice murder would be found out at a later date. So that later date comes during sentencing and it is determined that this was, in fact, malice murder. He is sentenced to five years in prison. That's it. But even before he is supposed to start his uh, his prison sentence, uh, he is going through all of his appeals. And while he's appealing it, he's free out on bond. So I want to say for the next, I want to say two or three years, uh, he is out on bail fighting his case, trying to get a new trial, saying that he didn't get a fair trial because this uh, killing was all over the media and he it was you know impossible for him to get a fair trial basically that was his defense eventually he exhausts all his appeals uh, this went up all the way to the supreme court and they refused to review the case and they upheld the conviction so eventually daryl kane turned himself in to do his prison bid and back in those days uh, in Texas which is quite different now but back in those days when you went to prison as long as you didn't get into any kind of trouble you would be given uh, basically day for day good time work time and eventually of the five years he was sentenced to uh, he ended up actually only doing two years the uh, prison system in Texas was very, very, very overcrowded back in those days. And that's just the way it was. So I think he was released September of 1979. Now, you know, his release is being uh, printed all over the newspapers. And basically, you know, this guy's a convicted felon and he's a convicted murderer and no law enforcement agency is ever going to hire him Ever. So the last thing that anybody has ever heard of Daryl Lee Kane, uh, he went into the insurance business and uh, moved out of the Dallas Fort Worth area and lived, I believe, in a little town outside of Lubbock, Texas. And uh, he would go on to uh, live out a somewhat comfortable life, uh, dying uh, sometime in 2019 at the age of 75. Uh, in his obituary it didn't say anything about him uh, being a former police officer this is the final resting place of Santos Rodriguez I've been to his grave to visit several times throughout the years. And um, sometimes, you know, there usually is flowers. Sometimes there's not. And um, I found this story just by me walking in the cemetery and looking people up. And when I seen his name, I just looked him up and I read that uh, awful story. And uh, it's a story that uh, if you did not live in Texas... In the early 70s, you probably never heard of it. You know, I think it's very important that when you have children to raise them properly, but sometimes when those children don't have the proper environment, the nurturing environment that I believe children often need to, uh, you know, prosper in life, you get sad situations such as this two kids just you know doing a little bit of this a little bit of that and to conclude the story on this note uh they later went to the gas station to dust for fingerprints and uh neither of the boys's fingerprints were on anything inside of the gas station now you know you guys out there be the jury you know were they there? Were they not there? And even if they were there, uh, to execute a 12-year-old because you think that he broke into a gas station. I mean, what kind of 
nonsense is that? And I'm sure that Daryl Kane felt terrible about what he did. And I'm sure he took the guilt of him taking this kid's life to his grave. I'm sure he did. And he made a bad, bad choice and a bad decision. And because of that, this little kid who should have grown up to be a man and a and have kids of his own and grandkids and, you know, talk about all the stupid things he would do as a kid. He wasn't given a chance to, re- to redeem himself. You know, you're 12 years old. You don't get a chance to, you know, to make a life for yourself. You know, when you're 12, you're just going to school and doing what your parents tell you to do. You don't have an opportunity to make your footprint in the world. And that was stolen from Santos by the careless negligence of one Daryl Lee Kane. Rest in peace to Santos. A life cut short. Okay, guys. I am out of here. Lamont at large. Hope to see you on the next vlog. I'll catch up with you later. Be good. Peace out.